Okay, guys, we're actually going to switch gears um, in this section, and then we're going to go back into looking at radicals in more detail. What you, what we're going to do in this section essentially is just combine functions, and as you can see, that's our objective. Uh, the video you're going to watch today is um, just adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions, and tomorrow we're, we'll get into the second objective for for this unit. So, the key idea is, is this. Let's say that I have a function f in terms of x. So, this function is going to be x squared plus x plus 1. And I have a different function, g, also in terms of x. Remember, this is the name of the function. This is function f, function g, and this is what variable we're going to be using. So both of them, although they have different names, are using the same variable. So let's say that function g is uh, negative x minus, uh, minus 5. Let me fix that. Minus 5. So all I'm, going to, all I'm going to do here is combine them doing something to them. And in a minute I'm going to go into more detail about what I'm going to do. So. Let's say that I want to do f plus g of x. And let, let this be the first example. So I'm going to call this example 1 over here. Let's say that I want you to find this. Find f of f plus g in terms of x. So according to this little rule, all I'm going to do is, and this is this is what you got to keep in mind. You don't have to memorize them because they're very easy to remember. Forgot to complete this. Let's add them separately. And what do I mean by that? You know what this function is. This function is x squared plus x plus one, and this function is negative x minus 5. So I can just remove parentheses now. Since this one is a plus, nothing here changes. So I'm going to do minus x minus 5. And now I'm going to collect like terms, combine whatever I can. This positive x and this negative x are going to cancel out. This plus 1 and this minus 5 are going to combine and give me a minus 4. So I'm going to have f plus g of x is going to equal that. Okay, and this was a very rushed example, so I'm actually going to get into more detail as to how to combine this. So let's explore an example in more detail. In this example, they're asking us, what are f plus g and f minus g if f of x equals 4x plus 7 and g of x equals the square root of x plus x? So we have two different problems going on here. But the first one is asking us to find f plus g. We know that, because it's given, that f of x, and let me use different colors here, that f of x is going to be, 4x plus 7, and g of x is going to be the square root of x plus x. So, according to my previous set of, of rules, the, the ones that you took on the previous slide, to find f plus g find f plus g in terms of x, all I have to do is add the function x plus the function g. And then it becomes a substitution problem because I know what f is. And so f is 4x plus 7. And remember, every time we substitute, we use oh, parentheses. And g of x is 
square root of x plus x. Now, since this is a plus, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the parentheses. Because plus signs usually don't make don't have any effect on, on things. So now it is important to decide which are like terms. And we know that x and 4x, I could combine them and they would make a 5x. This 7 has nobody to be combined with, and neither, neither does this uh, square root of x. Remember, we learned that to combine, to add any type of radicals, we needed to have somebody else with the same index and the same radicand, which are not, um, which is not the case here. And I'm just going to ask you to leave it like that. There isn't much more we can do. If you really wanted to give me a correct answer, we would do it in descending order, right? This is x to the 1 plus square root of x, because technically that's a x to the 1 half plus 7. But that is not important right now. The main idea here is that you know how to combine those functions or do what's asked, in this case, adding them. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example next. Well, it's the same example, but in this case, they want us to find f minus g using the same functions, right? So I have that f of x equals 4x plus 7, and g of x equals square root of x plus x. So we're going to use the same approach we're going to use my rules from the key ideas. Go back and look at those. And I know that if I have the function f minus the function g in terms of x, all I'm going to do is do f of x minus g of x. So what you've got, you got to keep in mind here is, again, we know which, which are the value. So I'm going to assign color red to f and color blue to g so you know what I'm going to use. So let's say that f of x is just 4x plus 7 and g of x is going to be, ah, but I want to use parentheses again, almost forgot. g of x is going to be square root of x plus x. And there's a minus here that comes from my formula. So I'm going to remove parentheses here. There's nothing I can do, so I can just go ahead and remove them. The problem comes here, because every time I have a negative in front, the signs of everybody inside the parentheses after it are going to change. And let me tell you why. For instance, you know that the square root of x inside the parentheses is positive. But this minus is going to turn it into a negative. Why? Because technically speaking, you have a negative 1 there. You're distributing that negative 1. So it's like you're saying, what's negative 1 times square root of x? The correct answer is negative square root of x. What's negative 1 times x? The correct answer is negative x. So that's why the, chi uh, the signs change. If you want to just short shortcut that and go around it, just remember that every time you have a negative in front, of a parenthesis, the signs are going to change. Again, I'm going to decide what are my like terms here. Now I have 4x minus x, and that's going to turn into a 3x. Uh, this one, we cannot combine it with anybody else, and this one, we can't combine it with anybody else. So that's going to be my answer. So I should say that f minus g of x is equals that. So this should be my complete answer.